Great, great. Uh, thank you for providing me a, a few minutes before the most important person comes up and talk about the last game and the upcoming game. You guys know we're wearing black at the next game, right? Good. That's a rumor, right? Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> I just wanted to address uh, the name, image, and, and likeness uh, situation, and uh, I'm going to be brief because I, I can't talk about the work that the working group is doing. I can share with you that uh, we'll submit our report uh, to the Board of Governors October 29th uh, in Indianapolis or Atlanta, I'm not sure where it is, uh, present our report. Um, working group is a diverse group. It represents all divisions, divisions one, two, and three. So it's representing all 1,100 athletes across the country. So as you think about this issue, uh, you need to think about its complexity as it relates to the diversity of the membership. Uh, my concern uh, with the California bill, which is all the way wide open, uh, monetizing your name, image, and likeness, is it moves slightly towards pay for play. And it's very difficult for us, who are practitioners in this space, to figure out how do you regulate that? How do you ensure that the unscrupulous bad actor does not enter that space and ultimately uh, create an unlevel playing field. And we know that there's not a level playing field uh, in, a, in a lot of different ways. But one of our principles is to try and create rules and regulations to try and achieve fair play. So how do you do that and ensure uh, that the third party bad actor doesn't enter that space and ultimately uh, drive some environments uh, to a point where recruiting becomes an even bigger advantage uh, than it is for some other schools. Uh, it's a complex issue, um, and I would ask that we all consider uh, that we have, and some of you are in this room, you know, baby boomers are no longer uh, the largest workforce in our country. Uh, at the end of the day, millennials are at this point in time. And we have Gen Z coming at us. So that's your 7 to 22 years old. That's your most wired uh, people in our society. They have an average of four devices attached to them on a consistent basis. And that's how they communicate. So many of us, and maybe you and others, think about name, image, and likeness as it relates to the old school model. And that's not it. That's not it. It's the technology space. It's the digital space. How do we ensure that whatever we create uh, is, rec is something that can be regulated? And that is one of the biggest challenges that we have. Um, I also want to make sure everyone keeps in mind. Um, I think all of you know me and know my position, and, and many of my colleagues across the country are, share the position. Uh, we've made tremendous, tremendous strides relative to care for our student athletes. The last piece that we fought for hard and I've fought for for years was full cost of attendance, health care, postgraduate, postgraduate services, making sure all schools across the country, when a student athlete leaves, they provide an opportunity for that student athlete to come back and finish her or his degree. Being able to provide stipends to parents for postseason play. So our association it has moved, although slowly, it's moved. And uh, the reality is, it's, it's complex, it's diverse, and we need to be sensitive to uh, all those schools across the country that are different than Ohio State or Alabama or Texas or, or Oklahoma. And so that's, I wanted to just share those comments with you. I'm sorry I can't talk about the work of the working group. Uh, I can say that I believe that there's things that can be done in this space that can be regulated, uh, but I can't obviously share with you what those things are. Uh, so we'll continue to work hard, have a report in October, and then the membership uh, will have an opportunity to develop uh, whatever model that exists. Uh, the NCAA is a, an organization that has taken a long time to try and, and modernize itself. I think over the last five to eight years, uh, improvements have been made in that space to become more modern. Creating this group is, is, a, is an example of that. But we can't have a situation where we have schools and or states 
with different rules for an organization that's going to compete together. It can't happen. It's not reality. And so if that happens, then what we need is federal help to try and make sure that we create rules and regulations for all of our membership that are consistent. And if that doesn't happen, then we're looking at a whole new model, a whole new model, and that is reality. If there's no federal engagement in this process, as Anthony Gonzalez has talked about, at the end of the day, there's a whole new model, and your jobs will change. It's a whole new model. So I just wanted to share those things with you. I might be able to ask, answer a couple questions before Ryan comes up. So, to, If it is regulated and if it is on a national scale, are you in favor of athletes being able to profit off their likeness and image? I wish I could say my answer to that, but I can't, Doug. I've got to be fair to my committee members and to my association. But that, and, and as you just mentioned, Anthony, you'd like to tweet about Anthony Gonzalez earlier. You are, you believe strongly that whatever happens, it needs to be on a national, yes. federal issue, that it's not piecemeal. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I wish I could talk about my feelings, but I can't. I, I want to represent my teammates on the working group. I think one of the big issues here um, that people are talking about, and I think I'm getting it from you, is competitive balance. Right. When it comes to this stuff, Ohio State has enjoyed a competitive advantage, I think, in a lot of different areas in recruiting, right. and mm -hmm. obviously there's not a lot of places competing at this level every year in the country. How would right. that impact, in your mind, Ohio State's ability to maintain what it is today? Well, if we were under the uh, SB 206, you know, I would call it upon all 400 and, or 550,000 Buckeye alums across this country. Um, you guys all pull up Cameo. You guys familiar with Cameo? Anybody? Let's pull up Cameo. And you know, let's say Jerry, Jerry Emick is my star linebacker, and he's on Cameo. What is it, like $150, $200 or something like that for him to do a shout-out to your best friend? All 550,000 Buckeyes across this country, you need to make sure you hook up with Jerry and do a, do a Cameo and pay him $150. That's the world we'd be living in. That, that's the world we'd be living in. And you don't so, want that. No, no, I don't want that. How do you regulate that? And then to Ari's question, that creates an unbelievable competitive advantage for us who have the capacity to do that. Other places won't. So you have to think about, and then that is unregulated because it's wide open. It's unregulated. You don't need to regulate it. So it's wide open. So. I just think we need to think those things through. I'm not saying it can't be done. I struggle after all these years as an AD trying to figure out how I'd create a regulation for that to ensure that there's a fair play across this country. I, I just don't know how we do that. And, and by the way, you, you're talking about Ohio State and the Big Ten. Think broader. Think, just think about other conferences. That already have a competitive advantage, just continue to have it? Yeah, at a bigger level, at a bigger level. Yeah. So Rob and then Edward from ESPN Rob. to the left. You, you talked about a concern for the bad actors, the mm -hmm. people who are going to get in the way. But there's a, this other side, and I wonder you know, where you stand on this or where, where you think it'll go in terms of um, out of the shadows into the light. By shedding light on this, you, you get rid of the, the black market, as it were. Are, right. is, that, is that a fair? Yeah, that's true. I mean, the, with the 206 bill, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, every, there's, no, there's no bad actor. But the 206 bill is wide open endorsements. So um, you know, there's pop-up ads that are unregulated. There's, there's, you know, there's wide open industries that are unregulated. Um, student athletes, we, we're Coke school. Student athletes could do Pepsi. We're Nike school. Student athletes could do Adidas. It's wide open. And so that, that, that has no... Um, Regulations and no restrictions or no best practices. It's got yeah, that's a scary movie. Works in the bad actor, the booster who. Well, in that space, there is no bad actor, because the bad actor is already allowed to be in that space as a good actor. There, there's in that space, there's no bad actor. In in this, it, so the reality is, I can't regulate that. So. You know, if the five or six of you were doing something and one of you is trying to make sure you monetize for yourself, I can't enter that space because it's not, 
I don't have to regulate that. So you, the bad actor just enters, and we don't even know who they are because so, I don't have to regulate it anymore. That's what that bill does. I'm, speculate, I'm speculating. Could it be a situation where you would not schedule a California school? Because let's say this, let's say right. if this happened today, right. would you schedule California school? Yeah, I would not. It, if, if, there's, if, there, if the rules are different in different states like they are, I would not. I mean, that's, that's not who we are. I'd, I'd stay, in, stay with those states and those schools that are like we are in the NCAA. So I wouldn't. What's great about California, and I have to applaud them, is they delayed it to 23, out of respect to try and allow the working group to come up with something that hopefully they may modify their bill to accommodate whatever the working group comes up with. So they are a pressure group. There's no question about it. And that's great. Uh, sometimes a, a complex bureaucratic organization needs a pressure group to help it see itself. So I'm not opposed to what they're doing. I'm opposed to it for if it ever goes into play, if it ever comes into action. And final question over there, Edward. You said California did delay theirs, but I've read where Florida is looking to do it in 2020. I mean, at this point, a lot of states are going to do it. Mm -hmm. What's what's next for you guys in the NCAA? Is there a compromise? Is, because this isn't going away. No, there's no compromise. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we're going to come up with a membership uh, recommendation on what we should do. And that probably won't be until late 20, maybe, because uh, our working group will do uh, its recommendation, and then the membership has to do its work to decide what it ultimately may want to do. Um, and then at, at that point in time, you know, then uh, the NCAA and those states will have to make a decision on how uh, they want to manage that. So, and actually the conferences, you know, Florida's 20, uh, then the Florida schools will have that advantage where their student athletes can just open free market name, image, and likeness, but then they have to play schools in their conference that don't have that opportunity unless those states come up with a similar piece of legislation. So uh, I, don't, I can't give you the, the answer to your question. It's, it's one of those that at the end of the day, when, it, when it's in front of you, you have to figure out how to deal with it. Does that make sense? And, yeah. and going back to Ari's question, you talked about a competitive advantage. I mean, if this is on national scale, I don't, I don't think anything really changes. I mean, the, the rich are only going to get richer regardless of yeah. if the system. But your richer is will be different. Your richer will be different. Well, some schools will have the capacity to do more in name, image, and likeness than some of the schools who are do do well. I can't give you examples because that would be disparagement of those institutions, and that's not right for me to do. But if you just think of it from a business point of view, imagine you're the athletic director at Ohio State with this massive resources and massive alumni base, and then you just create a list of your next 60 schools. And then you, pick, then you try and figure out from a business point of view, where do you want to be? Because at that point in time, it's pure business. So I, you, you can figure that out, Ari, you can figure that out if you went through the exercise and say, okay, if, if we had the ability to make sure that we're recruiting at the highest level as a result of this, how do we create a model where our athletes make the most? How many Fortune 500 companies? How big is the town? What's the connections with national corporations? Just think of it from a business point of view. You'll get there. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? Do you work? Yeah. Is he, does anybody, is he like just freelancing? Super popular podcast. By the way, new policy. Anybody that's not working, they got to pay to get in this room. Okay? He's got to buy a ticket. Gene, this is business right here. Oh, is that his business? So, oh, wait a minute. Wait, my NIL is, has a price. But I have a good question for you. To you. Everybody has seen this. See how he dodged me? Everybody's seen this coming for a while. Is, has the NCAA dragged its feet on coming up with the, quote, oh, no whole new model? No, no I mean, question, Tim. You know, I, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't more forceful on that. You know, I, the, the NCAA has taken a long time to modernize. Um, cost of attendance took longer than it should have took. Uh, paying postseason stipends for championships took longer than it took. Uh, we wanted to do this or talk about it a long time ago, but we had lawsuits hanging over our heads. So, yeah, you're exactly right. It's a large bureaucratic organization, um, um, very much happy to be a part of it because there's a lot of good. There's no better time to be a student athlete than today. Um, all you guys do is do the math. If you're a full ride scholarship, cost of attendance, and you happen to be on Pell, do the math on a monthly basis what you're netting. This is 
and I had $10 of laundry money. So at the end of the day, this is the best time to be a student athlete, even though there's more things we could do as we move forward. So I got to go. Thank you very much.